This is Johnny Nelson and you're watching Sporting Icons. All right, so following the previous video, I made mention to I would love it if Queensbury and Boxer would put on shows together once in a while. And by that, what I mean is two times a year where you can have stable versus stable. This is Sky Sports versus BT Sport. Frank Warren versus Ben Shalom. Boxer versus Queensbury. However, which way you want to spin it, two times a year, stable versus stable. Now, what I made mention to it, some people said, well, what kind of fights could possibly be made? Because their stables don't have the depth that, say, Matchroom has, which is true. It is true, but they still have plenty of fights and plenty of fights that you and I would love to watch. And what's great about it is that fighters from Boxer, fighters from Queensbury will get exposure on both Sky Sports and BT Sport at the same time. Okay, some examples. Okay, so I suppose the fight that's in the headlines right now, Joe Joyce versus Joseph Parker. But if Frank Warren has real needle about having that fight now, okay, Joe Joyce versus Huey Fury. Daniel Dubois versus Joseph Parker. Daniel Dubois versus Huey Fury. Dan Aziz versus Callum Johnson. Echo Essiman versus Florian Marku. Steven Robinson versus David Adelaide. Ebony Jones versus Raven Chapman. Hamza Shiraz versus Brad Ray. Corey Gibbs versus Sam Noakes. David Avanesian versus Chris Congo. Adam Azim versus Henry Turner. Let's see how Tommy Fletcher gets on, but I um, expect good things from him. Maybe he will take on Vidal Riley. Of course, Queensbury still have other fighters like a Tommy Fury. Maybe down the line, him versus, I know, Ben Whitaker, for example. Bit of a mismatch, I understand. Um, they've got Anthony Yard. Boxer have just signed Liam Beefy Smith. So, listen, there's plenty of examples, plenty of examples. And I'm not saying doing all that in one card, of course not. I'm talking like two times a year, Queensbury versus Boxer. And as I said, it's great exposure for all the fighters. Now, what will work as well is that boxing fans, true boxing fans, will gravitate towards them. They will talk about them on social media in the droves. People like me here on YouTube will be making videos about these fight nights coming up. People on the radio like Talk Sport, um, whatever, okay, it's going to become a bit of a trend. And what's great about it as well is that, okay, currently, a lot of you who watch, say, interviews with, say, Frank Warren and Ben Shalom and what have you, what is it that the reporters do? Well, they go there and they don't really have an interest in the show itself, but, you know, they've got to go through the formalities so tell us about your show, why should people watch it? Then they try and get the clickbait title. Well, what about what Eddie Hearn's doing? What Eddie Hearn said? What about one of his fighters? What about one of his fight nights? What's your thoughts on that? But you start putting on fights together, Frank Warren and Ben Shalom become British boxing heroes pretty much overnight because they're actually working together. And then these very same reporters are then going to go to Eddie Hearn and say, well, these guys are working with each other. Why ain't you? You remember only, what was it, about two years ago, maybe something like that? Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn were doing interviews saying how they're going to have a sit down meeting, have a meal and discuss putting on fights. And it went viral. Not because it's Eddie Hearn, not because it's Frank Warren. Again, we have to put egos to the side. It's because it's Sky Sports, BT Sport. What, actually cross-promotion fights? Legitimate ones? Not just the odd fight on the odd show here and there. You're talking literally stable versus stable? Fantastic. Bring it on. And that's what Frank Warren and Ben Shalom will get. They will get the buzz. They will get the hype. Suddenly people are tuning in to watch these fight nights. People who stand out on these fight cards are going to gain new fans. Now, is it important as to who wins most fights on what night? I mean, listen, that's up to uh, Frank and uh, Ben. But for me personally, not really. Not really. It's not really a case of, I don't know, Frank Warren and Ben Shalom, they put on, I don't know, 10 fights on one of these cards. Queensbury win six, Boxer win four. It's not that important. It's not that important because, listen, ultimately, they can make it a competition if they wanted to. Of course, they could have, um, I don't know, um, the promoter who whose fighter loses that fight, I don't know, give the winner a bit of a bonus. And what's great about it as well, 
thinking about like a money is that surely it would save Queensbury and Boxer some wages. Surely it would be cheap to do it because obviously you're not paying for the away fighter. Queensbury pay for your own fighters. Boxer pay the wages of your own fighters. The fighters don't even have to know how much of the ones are getting paid. Why not? Can we go as far as to say maybe on these particular fight nights you could have Adam Smith and John Rawlin doing the co-commentary together? The master of ceremonies, one for boxer, one for uh, Queensbury, just alternate the fights. You can have the punditry team. You can have Anna Woolhouse and Paul Dempsey and David Hay and Johnny Nelson and Carl Froch and um, Carl Frampton and throw John Fury in there if you want. Um, you've got um, uh, Dan... Listen, there's so many different things you can do, the promotions, everything. And I'll, I would love that kind of thing. And I think it will help both promoters. Genuinely, I think that it will. It will get a lot of interest. It really will. I said there's so many matches and it's great because then we can start going, well, currently, okay, we look at certain fights and go, yeah, but that can't happen because he's on that particular platform and he's on that particular platform we know how it works wrong side of the street kind of crap like what goes on in america like what's been going on for the longest time here in the uk where frank warren and eddie hearn haven't been put on enough fights together at least frank warren can say listen i had no problem working with the promoter of sky sports i'm showing you that because i'm actually doing it we're going to put on fight nights together and now you see why me and eddie hearn didn't put on fight nights together it wasn't my fault it was him he didn't want to do it there's lots of little nooks and crannies and things to look at. And listen, ultimately, okay, it is down to the network. So they willing to work with each other. Sky and BT willing to work together. I don't see any re reason why not. Why wouldn't they be? It'd be great to hear the commentary of Adam Smith and John Rawlin um, being excited when their fighter beats the other one. And then you can hear the whimper in the voice of the other one who lost. It is rivalry, of course it's rivalry, but it doesn't have to be nasty rivalry. You know, I'd love to get both of these on a podcast together to just talk about such situations. Why not? I really would. But anyway, listen, that's my thoughts on this whole situation. Um, hopefully, hopefully they sort something out. And I'm pretty sure that, I mean, if I was to ask a question, are you willing to do something like that? I'm sure both of them would say, yeah, I'm sure they are. And I'll say probably especially Ben. Ben loves competition. He loves we all remember him from the ultimate boxer days. And of course, currently on Sky Sports, he do like the cruiserweight tournaments, things like that. So he likes that kind of format. What's wrong with stable versus stable? It's not about outdoing the other stable to push him out of business. Sometimes a fighter could lose, but their profile gets boosted. So many different ways of looking at it. But anyway, that's my thoughts. You drop me yours, click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.